All right, this is part two of the review of worksheet one. We were on problem three, um, part C, where we were looking at the uh, supply and demand curve. This is our supply curve here. This is our demand curve. Okay. And so when we look at part C, it says explain the effect on equilibrium price and quantity if the slope of the supply curve de uh, sorry, increases. All right, the my supply curve is here. If I increase the slope, it's going to make the line, uh, you know, steeper, all right? And so I will get a supply curve possibly that looks something like this, okay? And so if I want to know what happens to my e equilibrium price and quantity, I recalculate my, e or re-identify my equilibrium price and quantity based off of this new slope, uh, this new line, with the original demand equation, all right? And so we're looking at this as if our demand stays exactly the same. The only thing that changes is our slope, the slope of our supply curve. If I calculate or identify my equilibrium quantity, it would be this quantity here approximately. I'm gonna call it Q1. And my equilibrium price would be here approximately. I'm gonna call that P1. And so looking at that, the equilibrium quantity, Q1, has decreased, right? It's closer to my x-axis, or I mean my origin here. So I can say that the equilibrium quantity decreases. And I can say that my equilibrium price, well, P1, which is from my new my, my supply curve, situation where the supply curve is increased, has a slope that's increased, um, it is bigger than the original uh, equilibrium price. So I can say that my equilibrium price increases. So this is what happens when I um, change, or this is the effect that the uh, uh, more not more, but a higher slope does to my equilibrium price and quantity. All right, and let's look at the last part of this problem, 3D. We have the same graph. This is my supply curve here. All right, it says explain the effect on the equilibrium price and quantity if the slope of the demand curve becomes more negative. So my demand curve is here. Right, and it is a negative value. And when it says more negative, basically it's another way of telling us that my demand curve has a steeper slope, but in a negative direction. For instance, if I have a slope of negative one, compare that to a slope of negative two, this one is steeper. All right, it has a, a you know, my run, I go down two, and to the right one from one point to the next. And this one, I go down one and to the right one to get to another point. If you think about slope as rise over run. So going down one and to the right one is something like that. But going down two and to the right one, of course, we're going to have a steeper slope, right? And so my demand curve can look something like this. I'm just going to draw it here, all right? And so if I recalculate or re-identify my equilibrium price and my equilibrium quantity, my equilibrium quantity now for this new demand curve, keeping the same supply curve, curve is going to be Q1. And then my, my equilibrium price here is going to be P1. Notice that these are both closer to my origin, right? They're smaller than the original equilibrium price and quantity. So I can say here that both equilibrium price and quantity, that's a P, will decrease. All right, and so that is uh, problem three. What I also want to do is I want to give you guys, I want to go over another problem that was from uh, 
the homework is a problem that looks something like this. Solve the following for R, okay? And I have something like B equals P E to the R, three R T, and I wanna solve it for R. All right, well, as you can see here, there are a bunch of variables here. It's a bunch of letters and one single value that's actual numeric here. Um, but we have a lot, a lot of variables here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the same processes we use when we want to solve for a variable in the exponent as if all those other values, like the P, the B, and the T, are all numbers. All right? The difference is they're not numbers, so we can't put it in our calculator and simplify it. Okay? And so this is just a problem to test whether you understand the solving process um, when it comes to solving exponential equations using um, some stuff that we learned. All right, remember, when our variable is in the exponent, the one that we want to solve for, in order for us to get it out of the exponent, we're going to use a log or a logarithm. Um, of course, I stick to the natural log here in class, and so I'm going to stick to that in this video here. All right, before I, I elicit this natural log function, I need to make sure that my exponential expression is on one side by itself. And so I'm going to divide both sides by P first. And I'll have B over P equals E to the 3RT. All right. Now I can take the natural log of both sides. And as we've said in class multiple times, the natural log of E to the 3RT equals 3RT. All right. That's that power rule with exponential functions. And so I get 3 times R times T. Now I don't have to worry about T, oh, sorry, R being in, in the exponent. Notice that t and 3 are multiplied by r, and so if I want to isolate the r, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, sorry, 3t. Three and that way I get that r equals the natural log of b over p all over 3t. All right, I want to make another note. Um, if I were to solve the this equation here, 3 equals 2e to the 3k, okay? And what I do is I divide both sides by 2, just like I did with this b over p. I got 3 over 2. That equals e to the 3k, okay? I take the natural log of both sides, and I'll get 3k equals ln of 3 over 2. I can divide both sides by 3, and I'm going to get k equals natural log of 3 over 2 divided by 3. All right, and so if I had an exponential function, and I know I'm, I'm skipping some steps here of what we would normally do, but I could rewrite this exponential function here as, let's say we had p of t. p of t equals, let's say that this was my p naught, that 2 right there, 2 times e to the Notice we normally put kt, but we just found out what k was here. And so instead of writing k here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write what k equals, but I didn't, I'm didn't. i not going to put it in my calculator. Okay? I'm just going to leave it like it is. And so I'm going to write ln of 3 over 2 divided by 3 times t. Uh, and Wiley Plus, when they want an exact answer, this is what it looks like. This is an exact answer. It looks complicated. That's why we usually put this in our calculator. And um, it makes it a lot less complicated. But that's an exact answer. All right. And so on one of the homework problems, they're asking you to use the exact answer. That is what they mean for you to do. All right. Um, I hope that is helpful, and I hope this is helpful in helping you review for your exam. Um, good luck as you continue to study.